Yo, yo, welcome everyone to the 2024 Riverwalk Rumble in Portola, California. Coming to you live from Premium Disc Golf in South Lake Tahoe. My name is Spanky Edwards. I'm here with my buddy Dan Double N Turner. What's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Is that our buddy Zach fishing the river? I believe so. All right. I think he almost missed his tea time. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, let's get right into the players. Here is uh, Will Ling coming out of Reno, 998 rated for now. Um, great player in the area, well known. We got Quinn Berkovitz also playing out of Reno, 987 rated. I played a fair amount of rounds with Quinn, and uh, when he gets hot and that putter's going, boy, look out for him. Okay, Alex Kalanji playing out of Tahoe City. Don't let the rating fool you. This guy's a player, 941 rated. Uh, he putts very well, and he's just a solid, you know, meticulous player. And Guy Melms out of Chico, 968 rated. Guy's a great putter. I've played a few rounds with him in tournaments. I think he, I, he took an AM tournament one time I was playing with him. Then we got Gavin Boss. Huntington Beach, California, 979 rated. I played with Gavin round two, only 16 years old, carries himself much older and a uh, great player. Excited to see these guys. Here's our leaderboard after round two. We'll just take a quick look at the top there. Quinn, 19 under round two, 1058 rated. And Will, I played with Will the second round. He birdied every single hole, 1044 oh rated. Not too shabby. Now, that was the red tees, right? So there's blues and reds. Yeah, second round was a little bit shorter course, but you know. Not that they didn't have to hit their lines, but it did it shorten yeah, up a little Will bit. Yeah, Will was within happened. like 22 feet on like all but a couple holes. Incredible, absolutely. Here we go, hole one, uh, 250 right over this hill here. Little mound. Just a little blind shot behind it. Yeah, there's a flag on top of the basket. You can't really see it from this angle. A lot of these guys can throw the forehand up and over. You can also play a, a right-hand, backhand hyzer around that pine on the right. Or you can just go straight over the top with a putter. Yeah, it seems like the, that preferred route, though, like you said, is just anything moving okay. out to the left from left to right. I'm pretty sure Luke to Tallman aced it warming up for, like, the second round, like, is, right over, yeah. I'm is like, that right? Like, maybe throw, like, a putter at it? I think it was an envy, yeah, just kind of straight up and over, banged it. Wow. Alex spiking one down in there. Looks pretty good. I expect all these guys to get pretty close on this one, being 250. Guys getting a look at the flag. I always like to kind of know where I'm throwing. Even if I've played the hole before, right. like, I want to see it real quick. And then it's so funny. No matter how many times you played a short hole like this, you still kind of lean your head over and take a look. Definitely. That one might be on the deeper side, but I well, think everybody's pretty close to home there. A little less height. So he just had that like kind of penetrating factor instead of the mm -hmm. high falling towards it. Here's Gavin. Oh, so we are going to see this backhand, this right hand backhand line. Yeah. I was kind of just expecting to see everyone just throw it out to the left. Gets around that tree, should be good. Yeah, he didn't love it, but it's right there. Well, if that's the furthest away, we're looking pretty good. For sure. Alex yeah, taking his time. Definitely a meticulous oh. putter. First hole of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, Gavin's got quite a unique putting style. You guys are going to see it, um, but uh, it's very effective. Oh, that is unique. You know, watching uh, the big dogs on tour, I, I think I remember hearing one of those guys commentating saying that... Uh, you know, on average, there's m more circle one putts missed on hole one than any other hole. And it's just just the nature of the beast, I guess. A little nervy. You yeah, know. absolutely. There's also a similar, like, a similar research statistic to the exact same distance putt for par for birdie and the amount that go in for birdie and par. You make way more par putts than you do birdie putts from the exact same distance because of the nerves. So. Yeah, that applies to me as well, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guy. Yeah, not too long at all. Good shot, guy. Nice birdie. It's like, uh... 
Will. I played with him on Saturday. He was pushing a car. It looks like he's just going for the old nutsack today. Just the bag strap on the shoulder. I've always known him to be the five disc guy, you know, just carry one little handful of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, hole two, par three, 304. You've got the one tree right off the, you know, right off the tee pad, but. Yeah, you can pick a gap. There's like a left side too you can throw through or the right side. Um, depending on the wind, I guess, is what makes you choose which line or whatever you're comfortable with throwing. This looks pretty good from Quinn. Slides up there into circle one. Yeah, you could go a little long and get end up in that, that tall grass, but it's looking like a little unlikely for these guys. Mm -hmm. Guy with an eight front. Except for that one did kind of drift back there. Yeah, he's he's towards. But the he'll back. be all right. Alex going right at it. Woo! Just underneath it. Horrible cut from there. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of backhands out of Gavin, huh? He's got all the tools, but yeah. Definitely throws a good backhand. Nice little flip up. Drift over there. A little low. Will from just outside the C1. Right around there. You know, a lot of those hot scores we saw um, from round two, that was the afternoon round. So I don't know how y'all play, but I think the second round, you know, you're just kind of loose. You're, you're ready. You're warm. Maybe. Uh, Things just flow a little better. Not yeah. everybody's used to playing at nine in the morning. You know my favorite joke is that it takes me 18 holes to warm up. <laughs> I can vouch. There's Tolan back there rock, rocking the umbrella. It got hot on Sunday. Uh, Saturday afternoon was, I think they were calling for mid 80 temperatures, but it was pretty overcast on Saturday, so we didn't really feel the heat. But on Sunday, even though we started at nine, the heat got cooking early. That high, it's that high Sierra UV index. You know, the sun, you're, it's cooking on you for sure. Right, yeah. Portola, I think this river right here sits at about 40, 100 feet or so. Guy taking a wide forehand over the top of everything. Um, a lot of guys just play up the middle straight as a basket. It's kind of like a hyzer flip shot. A little more technical. Um, see here, looks like Alex is... Liking this flick shot out to the left as well. Oh, oh different gap. His body English, his body English tricked us a little bit there. Yeah, he hit a tree, uh, circle two. Gavin's asking the disc to get lucky, and it does not do that for him. As he said, opposite. Right. I don't know, if you guys haven't seen Will play before, he'll throw a righty backhand, he'll throw a lefty backhand, he'll throw a righty forehand, he'll throw a lefty forehand. So whatever, even though righty backhand, lefty forehand are pretty similar, whatever the kind of angle he needs off the tee, he has that available to him. So gives himself a pretty nice advantage. Quinn flipping one up the middle here, like a mid-range. Looks like that may be the best shot of the bunch. Gavin looks like he's maybe just... I don't know how far he got up. Is he pitching out to play for par, or is he just has a jump butt to the basket? I think he's... Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. He's going to it, but he, I don't think he's running it. Right. He got up a little farther than I thought he did, honestly, after their um, early miss off the fairway. Although that was definitely a run. It looked like a layup. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like you said, unique, but very effective. Yeah. Um, That's two really good putts now in a row. Yeah, in my experience playing with him, he was a very confident putter in the circle. Alex is also a great putter. Alex, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but he, he takes his time and he's, you know, he doesn't putt it till he knows what's going in, which I do respect. Absolutely. Quinn with a nice birdie there. 
does Will take off his bag to tee off or there's just always on? <laughs> thing looks, things joined at the hip. I like that. A shorter cross like this, maybe not. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, hole four, par three, 270. I mean, you can see it in the background there. It's just kind of looking like a putter shot right at it for these guys. Oh, that right was at it. really that, close. That was off the flag. He likes it, a little fist pump. Definitely. Yeah, pretty straightforward hole. You can't really get too wide, though. So, you know, it's, you could throw something stable, but you got to pin it pretty flat and just, you don't want it to finish hot either. Yeah. We were actually kind of joking about this last night, how it's difficult to lay something up when you can't put any height on it or hyzer, just having to throw that straight shot right at it. Righty, lefty. It's like he likes the righty backhand. This is his natural play, so. Yeah. I would say, and I think he would agree with me, it's probably his his best play is the right hand backhand. Absolutely. I've played quite a few rounds with but, him. But, I mean, yesterday in the red course, he was beating me at my own game, Spanky. Like he, <laughs> he was throwing lefty forehand, forehand shots better, better than me. It was, yeah. It's no wonder I played like a bum. Just inside C1. Nice putt. Gavin, kind of a long comebacker for par. Oh, a little high. So much velocity out of that putt. I'm trying to think if we've had uh, Quinn on our coverage before, but I know I think Alex, Guy, and Gavin, this is all their first times, I'm pretty sure, being filmed uh, for a PDJ event. So I'm not saying it's playing into their play at all, but just something to keep in mind, you know. It does add, like, a different level of nerves, I would think. Absolutely. Even if it doesn't even make you play better or worse, there's still just a different feeling, a different idea that you know people are going to end up seeing this. So. Right, yeah. You're thinking about that. Without a doubt. And if I cage this, they're going to flame me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hole number five, 234. One of the shorter holes super tight there's like i throw a little hyzer flip and try to get it to shoot through there but uh, you can see the basket down there there's ob long if you do get off the fairway in this hole it's super dicey to get up and down for par yeah even at 234 hitting that first tree it's looking like getting getting there from there is going to be yeah. almost impossible it's so. a fair hole but it's very demanding will seems to lace it just about perfectly he's inside circle one yeah that was a really nice shot Yeah, you hear them hit, and you just you see them come down. It almost looks like they're ten feet off the tee pad. Do something good. Oh, this is horrible! Look, yeah, and do you see this up against this tee sign? Yeah, this is a tough line. Wow, well executed. Yeah, I think that was the red tee there. He didn't have too far to go. You know, 165 feet or so. A little too much hyzer on that one. Looking like a pretty good out. May have left himself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Guy giving an honest bid, just coming up a little short. Okay, so Will's a little shorter than I looked at initially in that from the yeah. oh, doesn't matter, does it? Jumps it right in there from thirty six feet. Nice putt, Will. Looks a little low. It looks like he caught that branch. May have pushed him down. Now, we haven't touched on it too much, but coming into this round, and we saw our leaderboard, Will Will had a two-stroke lead over Quinn, and he was up five on uh, Kalanji in third. Gavin and Guy were uh, starting around seven back of Will. See, Will's gotten a stroke so far on Quinn. Bogey. Um, this this course doesn't in the MPO division. You're not going to see a ton of bogeys, but um, I haven't really looked at the stats for this hole. But I would bet that is one of more one of the more bogeyed holes, just because um, if you 
you hit early, it shoots you off in the woods, and you don't really have a play for par. For sure. All right, hole number six, about 300 feet. You can't quite see the bats here from the tee, but you want to get past that uh, tree down there on the right. Yeah, that is parked. That was maybe an ace run. There's a river on the right side. You could go OB, but it would take maybe a shot off a tree or something. This looks pretty good from Quinn. It looks like the main goal is just keep it low, get through that low ceiling off the tee. And right. That obviously, hopefully, you move a little bit right. Oh, drop. Just like that. He's probably circle two, though, maybe for some type of look. A little inside from Guy, but that probably got up near circle one. Okay, yeah, there it is. Nice shot. That's a nice approach, nice high around the tree. Sliding in right next to the green, right under the basket. Long look just outside. It's turbo time. Oh. Oh, I wanted it close. for the fans. We all wanted to see the turbo go in. Quinn will straddle quite inside the circle. Birdie's going to get one back here on Will. Gavin has this for par. We still haven't seen Alex yet. So, yeah, he's. I, I heard. I heard somebody say skip in maybe when he was. You know, so he's. He's pretty okay, close yeah. to home. This is a really nice drive. Who doesn't like a bag on birdie? I like him. Gotta love that. The way I was fighting this weekend, the only birdies I'm making were freaking bag on birdies. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah. Hole seven, uh, three twenty-five. That red, red stake on that tree is a mando right of this tree. The river is long. Uh, I think with the way the hole shaped, the river doesn't come into play that much unless you just like cook it straight, like super far. But it's kind of, you know, protected. You can't go super wide. So if you if you pull it hard, it's not going to make it to the river. This is a good golf hole. A lot of these cores. A lot of the holes on this course are pretty fun, like fair golf holes. Uh, this is a John Hauk design course. Uh, I believe it's the first one he's done on the West Coast. He's pretty well known in the South and the Southeast for maybe even the East Coast for just uh, great course designs, fair courses, fun shots. Uh, I know he likes to give a couple options off the tee on a lot of his courses. Little chase card check in here. I think that was Peter banging a birdie on hole number eight. Here's Guy's approach. Okay, so that got a little down that backside he, hill. Yeah, it's the down river. the bank, but safe over the river though, right? Yeah, the river's pretty far down there. I, yeah, I didn't see anybody in any of my groups kind of get wet at all. <laughs> so uh, close. Yeah, Will's. That's going to be down there. but Oh, well, like you said, not in the river. but Right, yeah, there's this bankment and tall grass kind of catches this. It's going to be a tough bogey for this guy. Ellie, and for Gavin. That one looks like it should have stayed in. Absolutely. But tough from our angle. He couldn't believe it. These are mock X's, right? They are. Hard to see his, you know. Typically, you don't see it spit right through the chains on these ones. Right. I'm not sure what happened there. Although, you know me, I've actually never had a spit out spanky. Can you believe that? <laughs> wow. Now, don't get me wrong, though. I've missed some putts that I thought I was going to make, but it's, I had I must have done something wrong. I don't know. Back-to-back -back nice birdies for Alex there. Yeah, Kalanji creeping back into the mix. Only three back of Will. A little chase card check-in for Tanner from the knee. Yeah, nice. Got a boy. Tanner with a birdie on 16. Or, I mean, full <laughs> nine to move to 16 down. Here's Brio. Brio, Brio. Mark it a two. That's my boy. Great putt. 
Peter. Nice birdie putt. Putting a little pressure on the leaders. This is how it's done. Absolutely. Hole number eight. 198. Pretty tight gap. I think the where the uh wow. where our camera's situated, it makes the gap look more generous than it is. From where they actually have to throw from. Yeah, I mean it's even just tight. a few feet over, but it's it's, it's a tricky gap. Will gonna go with the lefty forehand. He's flexing it pretty hard. Let's see if he can get clean. Yeah. yeah. Get plate. He's in the circle. Gavin throws. I think this is a good time to mention. You see some bugs flying around there. There's a couple of these holes closer to the river um, where the bugs like to live. Um, they're out there bothering you. If you if you play this course, bring some bug spray. When about forty. Five? Guy really taking his time here for this 12 footer. Birdie. See, everybody else is pretty close. Looks like it. This was, yeah. So Wills did filter in pretty nicely with yeah. that kind of. I think it got a little slippery down that right side, but the way it came out of his hand, I mean, that was that was the line. Look at you, was the line he was looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Flangy. Birdie. Birdie. That's a little turkey for him, I believe. Okay. He's definitely he's caught up to Quinn now. Alex and Quinn are tied. Still three back of Will. Pull nine, par three, 240. Right. There's a Mando. So he, yeah, there's a Mando on the right side. Looks like he just narrowly missed it. Yeah, I think, believe he just missed it and then hit the tree behind it. So it almost looked like he hit the Mando tree, but he did not. He actually missed the Mando tree altogether. Right, and he'll go play it from a drop zone. Will's shot yeah. looked pretty good. Gavin's got this a little bit overturned, but working back. He'll have probably 45 from there, maybe a little downhill. There's some trees near the basket, so hopefully he can have a clean line. Guy's sending one down there. Here's out of bounds long. Edge, honestly. I think it was probably Circle's Edge, honestly. I think it was probably Circle's Edge, honestly. <laughs> Quinn coming down there. This is uh, Alex from the drop zone. That's a that's a pretty big it's drop, though. Yeah. And then the OB, you see the fence line there, is not too far uh, oh. not too far back of the basket. It almost looks like he went behind the fence, but I didn't see at all, maybe. So this is guy, yeah, well inside the circle. He hit up against the fence that'll be a two for him fantastic quinn yeah his shot looked a lot like guys so it makes sense will with the lefty backhand are they all are they playing triples that was like the same line i know right flangy for bogey now he's dropping two to the boys that that hurts especially on a going on a bit of a heater there and then 240 foot hole yeah Gavin cleans up his car, and that's going to do it for our front nine coverage. Uh, make sure you come back and check out the back. Will shooting that five down, and Alex, but even with the bogey on that last solo, with the five down, pretty solid shooting. Uh, yeah, obviously, fire emoji. Um, we're still seeing pretty much everybody at the top, but we got Peter Keen sneaking up there into the, the fifth spot, the four under front nine. Got Rio Frio and McFarling rounding out the top 10. Anyway, thanks for joining us, and we will see you guys on the back nine.